live from the studio of his parents' basement, the Have You Seen It podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Have You Seen It podcast. My name is Mason Knight. Sitting across from me is the one and only Cash Krause, but... Before we begin, if you guys can please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day. So with that said, Cash, what are we reviewing today? Today, we are reviewing a 2021 film. Yes. One that we missed, one that we tried to uh, watch before our top 10 list. Yeah. Did it happen? It did not happen. Did not happen. Was it out? Was it available to... uh, the general public. The everyday average schmuck like us. It did get uh, a very, very limited release December, yeah. but no Like you had to know us. Sean Baker to see right. it. Like Basically. the most limited, like he was showing it at his house. 11 For theaters. like four people. Yeah, worldwide. <laughs> 11 theaters. You had to travel a few states 11, to see it. Surprisingly enough, not in our town. Nope. Nope. Not, <laughs> not in small this. small little Bodog town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, like I said, I tease with it. It was uh, a Sean Baker film, Red Rocket. That's yes. the one we're reviewing today. We have Sean Baker, uh, friend of the show. Very we good friend of the show. We uh, reviewed the, the Florida, Florida Project, Project which yes. we both liked. I loved it. A lot. Yes. Uh, but first, Mason, it's been a while since we uh, met up. We were on. Yes. We were uh, both battling illness at one point. Yes, we were. Uh, the super cold going around. Goodness gracious, I'm yeah. still suffering from the side effects. I am getting better. Thank you for asking. Yes, I did uh, not. Didn't ask. You did. <laughs> Don't I care. You did. I thought you did at one Big point. Big mistake didn't. on your part. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. Let's roll back the tape. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, uh, yeah, definitely. yeah. We are here today. Uh, it's so. No shit. If you're wondering why it's we serious. didn't drop a video a little while or for a couple of days, that is the reason why. But we're back. We're the back last time films. we met up, we were living in a pre-slap world. And now we are post-slap. post-slap. I know. We have not had a chance to talk about it. God. I know. we. It's been so long now. Does he it even doesn't even matter. No, no one cares anymore. <laughs> That's the problem. We should have released something that day. <laughs> we have to get on the out. mic and talk about <laughs> yeah. this. Not like, I mean, everyone in the fucking world was talking about it. It was wild. Everyone has an opinion on that. Of course. Everyone you meet. Your Everyone. fucking, your mailman, your butcher. <laughs> yeah. Everyone who would normally never even watch the Oscars. Never. Not in a billion years. It was the best thing for the ratings. Because over the years, it has plummeted. But that, those ratings, yeah. got that bad boy through the roof. Definitely. I'm sure the producer was, well, freaking out for one. But also a little bit going. Yes, we got him. We I knew putting in. you front fucking row was, <laughs> was a good idea. <laughs> no one's, yeah. Especially with Chris Rock. Will Smith, though, man. He's had a bad week. <laughs> I 2022, bad week. not I'm off not to the greatest year. start. No. But, bro, I know we can move on because no one gives a fuck. But the fact that he won the Oscar after was so fucking funny to me. Right. Was and so got fucking. A standing and it was like ovation. 10 minutes later. And then they yeah. came out talking about how they asked him to leave. And he just said, no. Nope. I'm, nope. Nope. And then they're like, okay, here's the award. <laughs> <laughs> Did not expect that. <laughs> All right. Okay. But also just fucking so ironic that he ended up uh, winning. Winning the award, too. Because no one will ever remember that he won the Oscar. I didn't even know he won the Oscar. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) News to uh, me. News to me. Uh, But yeah, uh, tragic story. Yes. You hate to to see rich people really, really rich. Have any sort of turmoil. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's rough. Bums me out, dude. It does. Bums me out. I wonder what he's going to be able to do. Is he going to be able to provide for his family? He'll be on the streets. Yeah, he'll be be kicked to the curb. (laughs) No, he'll fall back on his bed of money. Yes. And be like, oh, wait, who oh, gives a early fuck? Early retirement? <laughs> okay. Who cares? He's damn near an early retirement at this point. I know. Anyways, anyways had to talk about it. Clip we it up. To. That's I'm sure there Will Smith is. was waiting for us. Uh, a lot of people were waiting, for sure. Oh, for sure. They wanted and we teased him with it, it, and yeah. we made them wait, for sure. But let's get to our film. Will Smith is not in this. He is Thank not. Thank God. Yeah. Would have made for a uh, awkward dynamic, <laughs> especially you know with the old slapping around too. Yeah, there was some slapping in this. There was but not of uh, that variety. No. Uh, different for sure. But no, uh, I believe this was. Well, I guess it was slapping cheeks, yes. just a different kind of cheeks. <laughs> cheeks were slapping. Uh, we're clapping, uh, oh, as the kids say. Clap they those do cheeks. Say clap it, not slapping anymore. That <laughs> Come is on, true. The old man. I know. The times. God. But uh, like we said, Red Rocket, uh, directed by Sean Baker, Baker, starring, uh, 
I mean, kind of just a surprising face if you know anything about uh, Rex Simon. Mm -hmm. That's his name, right? Simon uh, Rex. Simon Rex, you're right. Yeah. I only know him as uh, his rap name. What's it? What's, I can't. It's like Dirk Nasty or Dirk something. Dirk Nasty? Yeah, I can't remember what it is, but uh, it's just surprising because if you haven't seen uh, Simon Rex, uh, if you haven't heard listen to his music, he's got a song called My Dick, and it's all about his dick, My Dick. And back then, you know, you had no idea what the guy was packing. Right. Now, you see it in full 1080p. We get it. <laughs> we the we song understand the song. A lot of sense. It so. only took, you know, 20, 25 years. Dirt to Nasty is his rap persona. Dirt he, Nasty. It's, he, he's the funniest fucking, he's got a lot of funny songs. But he also starred, he has starred in a movie before. Yeah, he has. Uh, the Scary Movie franchise. Yep. And maybe my favorite Scary Movie, Scary Movie 3. Mm -hmm. uh, he is... Uh, but not that serious of a of a guy. No, you think he always looks pretty serious, but so this was definitely a different role, and uh, I don't know, just a risk for Sean Baker, I guess. To he must have saw I, something in him. I gotta be honest, though, from what I great. saw, he was awesome. He yeah, was really good. Sean totally Baker convincing. is an amazing director. Where I feel like he can get amazing performances yeah. out of because everyone but Simon Rex and maybe two other people are. Uh, are not real actors. Mm -hmm. They're just people, you know? Yeah. It's just like the Florida Project. Well, all those kids. Yeah. Just random Well, and kids, the main and lady. The, and the, uh, the mom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, all, but there's always like one guy, because you got to have one vet on. you got to have a Willem Dafoe. Well, of course. In this case, it's a Simon Rex, which yeah. I don't know how much he's helping you on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Sean Baker's getting so good directing his actors that he's like, you know what? I'll take anyone. Exactly, and it uh, adds another layer of realism, too, because everyone but Simon Rex, who you've seen before and is kind of familiar to, everyone feels so fucking real and authentic, yeah. like his girlfriend, his girlfriend's mom. Like, those are just real people that... I mean, his wife's mom. <laughs> yeah, technically. <laughs> it's his girlfriend yeah, I should say is, his uh, girlfriend because they weren't dating at all. No. I mean, they're actually no. separated. Well, uh, his girlfriend, I would say, is a lot younger than his wife. Oh, he uh, so, traded in for the new model. He did. He did. Uh, but the the model wasn't quite ready to no. be released. <laughs> I'd say it was uh, not ready to go year. off the show floor. No, no, it was not. <laughs> Still in development. It was. It was. Yeah. Uh, 17, but 17 yes. in Texas is a regular 21 everywhere else uh, in the world. <laughs> okay. What a, we get it. All right. You can marry a 14 year old as long as their parents say. That's wild. As long as the parents give that nod. <laughs> the hey, nod and the old thumbs up. You're going to be all right. You got this. You're 14. You've lived your life. You Time to settle adult down. decisions. Time to settle down. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you don't know the story, the kind of premise is an ex-porn star, Simon Rex, moves. Mikey Saber. Mikey Saber. Great yes. porn name. It is a great name. I don't know if it's as good as Jackson Hole. That's which true. <laughs> which is a great name. But... Uh, yeah, he moves from L.A. He's you don't know at all what kind of character he is when you first introduced him, but he's been beat up already, yeah. and he's lost everything. He moves to L.A. or he was at L.A. He had a he won a couple AVNs. He did, which he won, won for me, best oral. Yeah, which I can't. How hit. could he fall so far? I don't <laughs> how could he fall so far? How do you go from winning best oral to <laughs> uh, you know directing no money. ten girls according to him? Yeah. To, uh, you got to take a bus home to your shitty Texas hometown. Yeah. Anyways, that's what he does. He's pretty much kicked out of L.A. He has to move back to his hometown. He's got nothing left. No money, no anything. Kind of just walks right back into his life that he abandoned. And and I love the opening scene because initially I was confused. This guy's getting off a bus. He's walking yeah. this far distance. He shows up to this home. And uh, immediately this old lady opens the door. And she goes, are you fucking kidding me? You're never going to believe who it is. Yeah. And this guy just, we, you can tell though, like, uh, again, um, why, why Simon Rex is so natural with, with his kind of like sleaze bag, like way he moves yes. and maneuvers right back into I'm this I'm glad house. you brought that up because that's, and it's good writing too. It's yeah. really good writing this character. And I got to say, this is probably Sean Baker's most like mainstream film that he's done for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, yeah. definitely he's moving that way for sure. Uh, I mean, one of his films, Tangerine was all shot on an iPhone. So he's yeah. definitely moving into more mainstream. I mean, not, not like this would be ever a big film or anything like that, but uh, just the way it's shot and everything, but yeah. And how it's written now, it's, it's not that much of a story in there, but there's definitely a lot of character development or just so that you learn a lot about uh, 
Mikey Saber. Yeah. Because at first you think, he's a cool guy. Mm -hmm. He's super fucking laid back. Right. But like you said, you got to think about what what got him into that to position. To this point. Exactly. Yes. And it's funny because it goes, he starts with nothing, gains, 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 and actually ends up exactly where. So it's kind of a reverse movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he, he ends up with absolutely nothing and absolutely zero development. The only thing we learned along the way was just what a big piece of shit he is. Yeah. And he is a massive piece of and shit. And that's that's the thing. I really figured at some point in this film, and that's why like I really enjoyed this film quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, I loved it. Is I was waiting for that redeemable quality about this guy, and there literally was nothing. That's what I loved about it. Throughout yeah. this entire film. And I agree. Literally all the way up to the very end, you're just like, this guy's yeah. a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> well, kind why of, did I enjoy this film? It kind of takes even the whole entire film to realize what a piece of shit he is mm -hmm. and how... You know, like you said, it's it's unmovie like how this character is written to where there's zero redeeming, and by the end of it, you're just fucking done with him. Yep. You you're with the people that ended up jumping him and kicking him out and stealing all his money. You're like, yeah, thank God. Yeah. Because that guy, I mean, he's gonna take everyone down with him. Well, and he does. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I yeah. mean, he makes his well, wife's life miserable. His but his and but you learn before that. You, I mean, it's like he he it never it's never said, but he most likely got her hooked on drugs, mm -hmm. and he took her out because he tried to do porn with her too. Yep. And you, then you get the sense that he's going to do the exact same shit to this young to girl. This girl. Yep. So it's like well, it takes it's the entire film cycle. to realize this guy is fucking. He's the villain of the story. Exactly, and not only that, but like him describing Strawberry to the entire time. To yeah. uh, I, I forget, I forget his friend. What's his friend's name? Oh, to the and that's uh, uh, Lonnie. Lonnie. Lonnie's his name. Little Lonnie. Which I got to be honest, those that two was together, a crazy twist. Yeah, that's that's like something where like in a Sean Baker film, you feel like something's gonna happen mm -hmm. the whole entire time, but it actually does in this it one. It does. Yeah, it really uh, <laughs> escalates. Yeah, it does. But uh, I, I I love that relationship between them because Mikey knew Lonnie was kind of a dipshit and could just blow smoke up his ass and, and completely that's all took he advantage did the of him the entire time. Yeah, he was took advantage of him. He for was rides driving him around and he got nothing out of it. He yep. didn't pay him or anything. At one point, they even say like to make it clear to the audience, he's mm -hmm. like. What's he paying you for trawling him around? And Lonnie goes, oh, not really. Lonnie's got all kinds of little, he's got a strong list of problems. He does. <laughs> he most certainly does. But Stolen still, Valor being one of them. But that's what, that's what the, are so great about these characters is they're all just the most human characters in the world. They're all super flawed. No one is just a hero. You know, no one's a Captain America. That's for damn right. sure. But they're all super, no one is perfect in this film. But, uh, but yeah, that's when you start getting like, uh, after the first act, once you start getting the Lonnie feel and everything, he's like, mm -hmm. oh, he's just taking advantage of everyone. And he's going to leave everyone as soon as he gets what he wants, and he's just going to bail. Exactly, because the way he was described... So his wife had just let him come back to the house, yeah. just let him stay there. You know, uh, at this point in the in the story, he's not even paying for rent or anything. You know, he says he's going to eventually. He's going to get a job, and he ends up selling weed. Uh but, but he does it for a long time. Yeah, he does it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. And then, the you know, when they're pumping iron or hanging out in the car, like, all he's doing is just shitting on Lexi the entire time. Yeah. Like, she's a dumb bitch, man. The strawberry girl is going to be that girl. She's going to be that it factor. She'll be the biggest girl ever, man. This is my back end on the, in the biz and the yeah. industry. And it's just like. It's just about him. Wow, it's him. Yeah, the it's like time. the yeah. biggest narcissist you'll ever find <laughs> yeah. on planet Earth. Although he's not, he, he's not like pure evil though. Cause you no, can, he's not. Throughout the film, the film is the characters are in. And Simon Rex, you know, like you said, great fucking acting. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he, I know a lot of people like in the industry were talking about it, but it should have been talked about more because he gives yeah. a great fucking performance in this. Because he is conflicted with a lot of the things, especially mm -hmm. when he's like, when he's got to tell Lexi about leaving. That scene was he one of the it. most awkward <laughs> film scenes I've ever seen in my but life. But very well done. Yeah. You know, I hate awkwardness, but it was very well done. Because where you just feel the tension. Mm -hmm. And you can feel how he, he he had a problem with it, but he was going to go through it no matter what. Because yep. he's just a big he's, piece of shit. Well, yeah. right. <laughs> and he's absolutely obsessed with uh, Strawberry. Yeah. And he's had this fame at one point and to be back in this hometown. And he's got to lie to everyone he, he knows about why he's there. He lies to Strawberry the whole fucking time. Yep. Which is a funny fucking scene when she kept dropping him off. Dropping him off in front of the house. <laughs> the lady and finally comes out, the lady comes out with a shot. You know what's so funny too in this? It's great writing because eventually, you know, after like the, the second or third time of her dropping him off there, I was thinking, come on, the homeowners have got to see this eventually. Something's yeah. got to happen. And I was like, maybe they just missed it. 
and then it happens. She comes out with the shotgun. I go, yes, brilliant. I'm glad they brought that. Well, the first couple so times, true. you got to be thinking, like, you're not ready for it. You're like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, twice? Yeah. Maybe he's just drunk or something? I don't know. But then you get the sense that it's happening so often that mm. they like, know what time it's going to happen yeah. and everything. Uh, but, yeah, good writing for sure. And uh, you definitely get the sense of Texas in this film, yes. especially with just the amount of sweat on people. Well, it's humid as hell. When he's running at the end there, dong swinging, <laughs> he is trenched in you fucking know, sweat. You know, Cash, I got to be honest with you. We're seeing a lot of dong these days in A24 films. I, hey, I can't find it. Right? We can't. Especially <laughs> are when we? it's hitting the kneecaps. Has, it, like, not, goodness, has it not always only added to the film? It really hit. It really did. It was super. The funny. last two times we've seen the dong, it's always added to the film. It not taken away, off. only added. And as long as it's that's happening... Who are we to stand in the way of change? I'm starting of, to think. Change. I, yeah, I'm starting to think everyone's got packages oh, like yeah. that. I'm just well, missing porn out. stars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they just both happen to be porn stars. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess they both were. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was one thing. Was like they throughout this film too, and you know, I, I got, I had been thinking about it after seeing Jackson Hole and and X. I'm the entire time. I'm like, no one's talking about this guy's dick. This guy's got to be fucking huge. Oh, for sure. Never bring it up. Surprisingly. Mm -hmm. But it actually made it funnier. That's because, what I'm saying. Because yeah. the payoff of not even realizing it, uh, it was hilarious. They didn't yeah. build up at all to it. And X did the same thing. They didn't yeah. build up at all to it. But, uh, but yeah, funny. In the lead up to that scene of him jumping out the window, was like, give me, give me 30 seconds. And he jumps out after a second. Because you get the she sense. She counts to 10. Yeah, yeah. But you get the sense he's been in this situation mm. a lot. Yeah. Where he's, he's, this is not his first time that he's had to jump out a window. And, and just bail because he just leaves everything. And it's so funny too because it's like you're, it's the first time I think really in a film where the main character I was rooting for, like when they took his money, I was like, fuck yeah. When they, oh, you yeah. know, when they did all that stuff, when they're like, you got 10 seconds to get out. Cause like I, I genuinely felt bad for Lexi in that situation because she thought yeah. that, and she, the most fucked up thing, we haven't even brought it up yet. But the, her kid, trying to get her custody back for her kid. I know, yeah. And and then the way he treats her when he's sitting on but the foot of the bed. Not only that, but to a lot of people and to her, he told them they were getting back, back together. together. And that the, the whole reason he came back was that they were going to uh, go on another run and try, try again, try to amend everything that happened. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh, that's so great. Everyone's like, everyone's like, oh, man, that's so great. And then... Like you said, a second later to Lonnie, he's telling her what a piece of shit she is yeah. and whatnot. And, uh, that he has no intention of being with her. Yeah. It's a brutal watch. It uh, is. But that's, like I said, that's what uh, Sean Baker is great at. Is it's just like the Florida Project, too, where it's like you weren't sure to root for the mom or not. Yeah. You know, you wanted her to do good and you wanted her to be happy. But very flawed. But also flawed, yeah. Flawed on this aspect, too, because... Um, you but know, not just straight mom, up evil. No, 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 <laughs> like, of course uh, not. Yeah. But her and her mom go outside, and Mikey Saber peeks out the window and sees that the mom, that Lexi's helping her mom, what we assume to be is meth. Oh, right. Remember? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, the doctor's giving half doses, doses bullshit. You know? Yeah. So, like, obviously, she's still struggling with amphetamines as well. I know, but of all the people to criticize... Yeah, it's Mikey Saber. <laughs> <look at> <laughs> <laughs> oh, this God. piece of shit. But uh but yeah, I, I love those scenes. Uh especially when he's talking to Lonnie, he's talking about like all the houses he owned and everything yeah. like that and how he's gotta get back there and whatnot. He's owned three properties and all this. <laughs> yeah. I gotta I gotta talk about this too, because I love the use of angles in this film and I love the wide shots. Yeah. I really enjoy the cinematography. There's something about uh especially this film is like real indie feel, you know, kind Definitely, of yeah. almost, I don't want to compare it this way cause it's, it's much different, but with some of those like long shots of him walking in with all the open terrain kind of remind me of like Napoleon dynamite. Those. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of, uh, I'll go back, but it reminded me a lot of the Florida project too, mm -hmm. where it's like they're taking or what Sean Baker's really great at is taking, let's be honest, shitty places and shitty towns and kind of giving them this weird, like, charm and beauty to them. Yeah. Like, because uh, this is a shitty, you know, I don't know, outside of Houston or something. towns, exactly yeah. like that. There's nothing there, really. But uh, but the, with those angles and what he does to it, it makes it look really nice. And he made the, uh, that shitty Florida com complex look decent, Looks too. somewhat like, appeasing. Yeah, yeah, even though it was right outside of... It Disney was, World. It was right outside of a really beautiful place, but it was the ugliest place, you know, near it. But 
But yeah, he's the, great, man. The he's use of up great. angles and, yeah. and down angles were really. I don't I, like that's really hard to pull off if you don't really understand what and be able to like combine everything. But I love yeah, that. That's definitely one thing you get is Sean Baker understands every aspect of yeah. of filmmaking for sure. Yeah. And what's so wild, and we talked about this with the Florida Project as well, but I have to bring it up in this film. It's insane to me that this film was shot for $1 million. I know. Yeah. I love that the edge of the, the estimated, it's either 1.1 or 1.2. 1. They really went wow. crazy with the yeah. 1.2. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. It's amazing. To yeah. be able to make a full blown film like this and for this film to be that good for $1 million. Yeah. When you, when you go and pitch a film or an idea like this to A24 and you go, Hey, I just need a million bucks and you're Sean Baker. It's, well, eight twenty four immediately creams in their dream. Like, yeah. You, you get you, well. You had us at one million. Yeah. Are you? That's what we do here at eight twenty four. Yeah, we did, only we have also, a million dollars. Yeah, we also produced uh, the Ford Project. Yeah, it's great so, for us. Uh, so yeah, you've got it. Yeah, I, they probably again, signed it, that check that day. Yeah, but this is just the perfect film. And of course, you know this film can be made for fucking cheap. There's nothing going on. You know. Yeah. Uh, but still look amazing. Still look like it was made for twenty million to thirty million dollars. Yeah. You know, it looked uh, it looked really good. Sean Baker, I want to see what he can do with a lot of money. You know, uh, as yeah. much as I love these films, and I, I would love to see what he want to do. Of course, maybe he's the kind of guy that doesn't even want to do something like that, and I could totally get that. Mm-hmm. Well, and not only that, but it's like he's probably taking his time too, and he's like, you know what? I'm really going to develop I, I, as if he needs to develop more, but I'm really going to develop, you know, my filmmaking skills to a point where I do get ten, fifteen, twenty million dollars for a film, you know? Yeah, you and I respect sh- it, and I'm sure he could easily, easily at this point, yes, from from a big studio, get something. I mean, uh, Disney loves give, giving indie uh, writers and directors a ton of money to do films. That's why they're so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Sony, not the case. No. They love to give shitty directors a, <laughs> a ton lot of, money. of money. And then they blow it. <laughs> <laughs> In zero freedom still, though. Yeah. Not to do anything artistic. But, uh, but yeah, I love it. I will be uh, first in line to see Sean Baker's, well, when it comes to th- uh, video on demand, because you'll never be able to see a Sean Baker film in theaters, unfortunately, yeah. if you live around here. I know uh, there's no new work for him yet. Nothing released. Red Rocket was his last film, but I am, I'll be looking out for his next film for sure. Yeah. That, and it took him four years to do that in between a uh, Florida project. Oh, wow. So, and don't, when, if you remember 2017 Florida project was, I mean, it was, I think it was nominated for an Oscar even. Mm-hmm. So it was huge and it still took him that long. So yeah. good. Take your time with it. Yeah. I'm all good and with it. He also writes, I think he writes almost everything he does too yeah he's got a co-writer in this one but he's great yep and it made a whopping 1.5 million at the box that's that 824 money that they it also got 599 from me and it was a 599 well spent yeah yeah Yeah. he got 500 well that's got to be where they're making their money off on any on on any a24 film that's where you're making your money unless it's one of three films because like you know we we're shills that's fine but you know, anytime I see an A24 film for renting and it's fairly new, I'm like, boom, okay, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, boom, yeah, you I haven't seen it. it yet. Yeah. I saw this one film from A24. It is a wild film. Crazy film. <laughs> but it's uh, it's something, uh, uh, The Friends of Dick and Harry or something like that. I don't know but it's, seen it. Dude, it's, the, the premise for it is wild. It's these guys, they find their friend mm-hmm. and uh, he's dead. And you don't exactly know why. But let's just say bestiality is involved. <laughs> and dude. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of it for sure. Yeah. yeah. It is a wild film. Yeah. Like an absolutely wild film, but hilarious. Well, that's what's, I mean, like you said, total shills. Shilling out Chilling here. out. <laughs> that's what we do. But that's, I mean, that's that's one thing you're going to get. You may not love every film, but every A24 film is going to, it's not going to be like a film. Story. It's not going to be like a film you've yeah. seen in a very... Very long When I think that, again, is what is so refreshing about A24 is it doesn't take the conventional route every single time. When you get remakes, when you get retellings, it's like these are all original stories. Oh, yeah. You know, they're unique. Oh, yeah, for them to be, uh, for doing kind of a franchise with X is is fucking wild. Yeah, I'm curious about that. I I can't wait for it, yeah. And they're coming out with their first animated film this year also. Oh, really? uh, They're definitely branching out, but... it's still, it looks like, it's a, it's a, it's a, like about a snail. It looks like the most A24 animated film mm-hmm. you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, I love what they do. 
Would you recommend this? I would definitely recommend it for sure. It's a film that, although you know you wouldn't think, I w- I wanted to see it on a bigger screen. Yeah. You know, like you said, the cinematography was amazing. Uh, the direction is amazing, and the acting from all all the characters are amazing. Yeah. You know, even though you can definitely tell that the, all the characters did not have that much acting experience. Right. But they were able to do it. Uh, and for me, absolutely re- uh, recommend this. You guys know that. Uh, anything else on this film, Cash? No. I mean, we didn't talk about it, but it's it's a pretty funny film, too, it as is. well. Yeah, it's, it's a very pr- funny. <laughs> it's yeah, very... there's some moments. Yeah, it, there's definitely some moments. And it gets kind of wild at one point, too. Yes, it does. It's kind of stressful as well, but uh, ups and downs. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we barely we, we, glaze it. But that whole part, I mean, I don't want to give it away to anyone, but that whole part where things turn. Mm-hmm. It's a stressful 15 minutes. Yes. You're kind of freaking out with this guy. And I always thought at some point, I was waiting for that moment in this film where this guy would get in trouble. Of course not. And he never did. He'd always just find a way out of it. Yeah. Every single time. Because these guys, you know, they weasel, they weasel, they weasel until it all builds up Mm -hmm. and they get kicked out of an entire town. Yeah. And then they get ran out of a town with nothing. Uh but your big old donger. Yeah. Which well, is really all you need in this world. I, that, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Apparently works out it for It got him a, a, a nice little 17-year-old. It did. And a few awards. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the funny scenes, too, where it's like, why did you win best? <laughs> I know. And she every, was giving you. It's so funny because multiple people bring it up. Yeah. Like, but I just don't understand. I don't understand. How did you win? And every game? time he had to like give him a note, he's like, you don't understand. Yeah. He's like, you got to drag- angle the head right <laughs> to face the camera. I got to drag eight different girls. He's, he's freaking out. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, that is an odd award. It is. Well, to give to the male. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are essentially doing nothing. Right. Yeah. It w- but it was funny the way they set it up because like the first time they bring it up, he just says, oh, yeah, I won Best World. And then later on, he yeah. starts describing it. And that's what's funny because I just assumed but you the know, joke, he won Best World. The ones you start thinking about is the... <laughs> you know, like he went he's down giving and, the oral. Yeah. yeah. I know. And the guy played off of that. But yeah. it's not him. It's him getting it. Getting it. Yeah. That's what was so funny about it. I laughed out loud when that happened. I was like, oh, my God. It is. It's a funny joke and it's a funny fucking award. Because what do you do with that thing? I did nothing here. Everyone's got to be honest. Let's be honest. You put it on your shelf. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else you do. You lie and say it was for something else. <laughs> yep. uh, but yeah, good movie. Recommend it. Absolutely. You can watch it anywhere, I guess. Yep. I watched it on Amazon. Is that what yep. you rented it Prime on? Video. Yeah, exactly. Rented it for five ninety nine, but well worth it. Definitely. Yeah. All righty, everyone. Well, that is our review for Red Rocket. If you like what you've seen here, please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification so we drop videos here every single day. Thank you so much for watching and listening. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. And until next time. Bye.